is Sam O'Reilly for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm at Steve Goodwin's offices today and lucky enough to be joined by Yusuf Kamari. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm very good. We were just talking. It's been a little while, but um, <laughs> this is the first place you did your first interview. Yeah, before man. Before you turned pro. Yeah, yeah, we're back here. This is literally, I remember I was doing a media day and my first interview was done in here, so yeah, back here again. You're now 9 and 0, so yeah. in, you know, in, the, in the two and a half, three years, you've racked up a very impressive record. Mm. Um, you've won accolades within the Goodwin stable, you know, best prospect and stuff, so you're getting recognition. Mm -hmm. How how's it been for you, Yusuf? Talk me through, you're a pro, and, and you're not yeah. just a pro who just start. You're, you're now on the verge, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but titles are now yeah. you know, in, in yeah. distant, not so distant future. Talk yeah. to me about it. I mean, you know, I've, I've got like no complaints. I mean, it couldn't have gone better for me. I mean, I turned pro, and you know, as an amateur, when you're talking about turning pro, I feel like a lot of people tend to give you a lot of negativity about it straight away, whether they know about boxing or not. So they sort of tell you, you know, boxing's, they, everyone thinks they know everything. So they say boxing's like this or turning pro, you've got to do this, you've got to do tickets or whatever. But um, since I actually turned pro and, and everything gone so smooth, it's, it's almost unreal, you know, like I've won nine on the trot. Um, I've been putting 50-50 fights and I've come out good so like I said I've got no complaints and I'm looking forward to the future like you said titles man so, yeah yeah so before yeah, man. before that you're on the ultimate boxer around the card which is yeah. the 20th of September yeah um Talk, talk, talk to me about that. You've been on a couple of big shows now. Yeah. Um, on the undercard, is that is there a big difference between those in New York Hall fight nights and what, what does it feel like? Um, there's a big difference. I feel like when I'm on New York Hall and I'm on one of Steve's shows, um, you whenever Steve says you're gonna box, you're gonna box. You're seventh in the on in in the list. You're seventh in it. I mean, on the big shows, a bit different. You might be a float. You might end up boxing after the main event. You might not even box at all. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's very different. And you know, if you're gonna go on the big show, you gotta weigh up the pros and cons. You know, and see if it's actually beneficial for you to go on it. But um, that being said, it is it is benefit. I, I like going in the big shows because. Being an amateur watching boxing when I was young growing up, I always wanted to be what I saw on TV. Yeah. And that's the big show, the O2, the the the, um, the L2 in the goals or whatever it is, or Wembley Arena and them sort of places. So yeah. in a way, you know, it's always gonna be appealing to you regardless of the risk there, you know. So Yeah, yeah and the, the experience of being part of the big shows and yeah, yeah. you know, going through the process, the the weigh ins beforehand yeah. and yeah. the media day. So it's all gonna be good, you know, good experience for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you have you done a lot of tickets for those? The, one thing I always wonder about, obviously yeah. a lot of times the guys come on there for, to help with ticket sales and stuff. Yeah. Um does it do you notice a difference in your ticket sales when you're on the big shows rather than the New York Hall shows? Yeah, of course. I mean when I'm on a normal show, I mean I got I got my I'd say about 90 to 100 people that are there regardless of what show I'm on and you know even if the show's small or if it's not in that great of a venue they're there regardless but I feel like when I'm on, on a big show like if it was the Joe Joyce on the card or Wembley Arena a lot of other people start popping up and coming to the show so in a way it does help raise your profile people seem to get more interest in you when you're boxing on the big shows but um, yeah, there's a big difference, man. I mean, a lot more people are interested. And what well, sponsors definitely. as well? I guess you can offer that extra bit of exposure. Exactly, yeah. It's all good for your yeah. profile. It's, it's definitely, I mean, sitting down with, with potential new sponsors and having the ability to say to them, you know, a box that won't be a arena, a box or not, what box are going to be twice now. Um, it's like a big, it's like a big, um, how can I say it? Uh, it's a feather in your cap. It's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's, go, yeah. it's an achievement at the end of the day. Yeah, not yeah, everyone yeah, gets yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It yeah. makes you seem a bit better than if I was just someone to say, you know, I'd box all my fights at your call, for example. Nothing wrong with that, but yeah, um, no, I understand your point. it just means it gives you a little bit more, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. We spoke about titles, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's booked in. Yeah. You are fighting yeah. for the English, is it Super Featherweight? English Super Featherweight. Super, title, yeah. Against Liam Dillon. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that, about the opportunity. And Did you think Super Featherweight would be where you box for titles? Initially, no. I always thought I'd be a lightweight, but um, having spoke to my coach and my manager, um, I walk around pretty much at lightweight. Lightweight is not really... It's no struggle at all to make. I mean, let's, to be honest, I can eat McDonald's day before a fight and I'll make lightweight. So I thought, you know, I need to start pushing myself. I come out of my comfort zone and be the best I can be. And the opportunity came at Super Featherweight, and yeah, I'll, I'll make the weight. I just got to be a bit more disciplined, but I'll make it. So yeah. I'm excited for the challenge, though. So. I'm ready to go. Liam Dillon's uh, Southern Area title holder. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's another Goodwin guy. Yeah. Um, so it's in house. So you obviously know a little bit about him. Yeah. yeah, well, what, yeah. From the outside looking in, what do you, what do you know about him? What do you think about him? His style wise and stuff. And how does this, this fight potentially match up? I saw his fight. I think it was his last fight when he won a Southern Area against against uh, David Birmingham, and he was very fit. He looked very strong in the ring. 
And one thing that stands out a lot about him is his punch output is a lot higher than a lot of other boxers. Even as a pressure fighter, he seems to be throwing a lot more punches than a lot of other pressure fighters. So it's a big challenge for me to be able to go in, to go in the ring, box someone of that ability, and I'm, I'm just excited for the challenge, you know. It's something I've been looking for, I mean, if we're not in boxing to, to challenge ourselves and be the best we can be, what's the point, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. You're part yeah. of the Xavier Miller, the, the, the ever-growing stable and, <laughs> and getting a better, you know, reputation growing yeah. month on month and year on year. What's it like to be part of that? It's great, man. I mean, we've got great boxers in the camp. We've got Kate Prosper, who's boxing tomorrow for, for the English title. Um, it's great to be around guys like him because, for example, when you feel like, how can I say it? If you're in the gym, right, and you can do the most push-ups in the gym, which is, say, 50 push-ups, right, and then you think that's the ceiling. When someone walks in and does 200, now you know you've got to elevate your game and there's another level to go to. I feel like when Kay walked in the gym, it showed me, okay, at the time, I wasn't going for titles. At the time, I was still on my way up there. And to see someone who was going for titles, seeing the way they train and the amount of discipline they have to put in, it showed me, right, there's another level for me to take my game to. So being around them kind of guys is wicked, man. It's a built-in role model, training with day in, day out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? Yeah, it must be exceptional. And yeah. So Abby is, you know, as a, is a coach who's ever improving his reputation is increasing yeah, and he's yeah, got yeah. some good guys and one you're one of them and as i said you're yeah. a very well touted uh, yeah. i suppose prospect as of right now but um <laughs> on the verge of titles so nice good thing are you um are you training full-time yusuf are you uh, do you have to work around do you have to work um, around training or what's your situation i'm working at the moment i still do a bit of personal training here and there but um i've got two sponsors that have come on board and very soon i'm going to be able to go full-time so I've got Tiger Bay, Shisha Lounge, they've got places in Kingsbury and Hanger Lane and um, also KMT Apparel. Uh, they both look after me to the point where I don't, I, I don't really need to work at the moment. So, I mean, you know, I can't be thankful enough for their help and we're going to go to the top together. Fantastic. November, the, what date is your t English title fight booked in for? Uh, November the 30th for now. November the 30th. Yeah. Should be a very good fight. Yourself and Liam Dillon, two very good fighters. Yeah. Different styles as well. So. Different styles, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. I think they'll gel well. We'll gel well. It should It'll be, be a great. good fight. Listen, thank you very much for talking to Boxing Social. Yusuf Kamari. Thank you, man.